everybody. So I decided I haven't done it. A good decent painting in a little while and I decided I want to do a backdrop sort of painting and I saw Susan King on on YouTube as art by Susan King so this is this is her initial idea that I saw um, just want to give credit where credit is due she's really good at these pulls but she did a a chain pull and it's just this this kind of beaded chain and she, she did a string or a chain pull on top of it that I liked but what I really liked was the initial pull that she did it made it look like a really interesting rainy day and so I'm just going to do that part of the chain pull because I want to get a background that looks like a rainy day in order to paint something on top of that. So that's kind of what I'm doing today. I've already got white uh, background on my canvas and I have a chain that's way too big but I'm going to use, uh, I'm not going to break it apart just in case I need to do a chain pull on a larger canvas at a later date. I've got three colors I'm going to use um, and I'm going to put one, one or two drops of the coconut milk serum in each one because for this kind of chain pull I really do want small cells and to get small cells instead of just barely mixing I'm going to mix it in pretty well so it breaks up the silicone and I'm not going to because I don't want big giant ginormous cells I just want small ones so I'm going to use my trusty chopstick Mix in the silicone. Oops. Stuck it in the black without wiping it off. Oh well, there was such a small amount of purple in there. Shouldn't matter. And then I'm going to stir in the dark blue. So again, what I'm trying to do is just get a backdrop for a painting I'm going to paint over once the paint is dry to the touch. I don't let it cure for the full three weeks. And by the way, I do recommend anytime you do a pour, you let it cure at least three weeks because even if it's dry to the touch, it might not be completely dry. So you need to wait to seal it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to get my chain, which just fell on the floor. And I'm going to do the black first. So I'm going to get enough chain dipped in the black to go across this whole bit of canvas. And I'm just going to, you know, run the excess off. Whoa, that's more than I really needed. And I'm just going to put that right here on the top. And move this out of my way. Whoa! Don't get started without me. And I'm going to very slowly drag down. I'm doing this super slowly because I don't want to go under that layer of white that's threatening to overflow the top of my chain. But I want it... I'm wiggling it a bit just so it won't be perfectly straight up and down. Uh oh, the white's overflowing. Well that's okay because we're going to go back the other direction with the black as well. Pull it all the way off the canvas. And then I'm going to wipe it off as well as I can. In fact, I have a little bucket of water over here. I think I'm going to I 
recommend keeping a bucket of water so that you can dump it outside in a trash pile or something and not put it down your drain when you clean things off. You don't want to clean your stuff off in the sink and then end up clogging your pipes with acrylic paint. Okay, so I wiped it off and now a little less this time. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this dark blue going in the same direction as that. Yeah. Set it right across the top. I'm getting paint all over my arms. I lean. Same thing. Just drag it down. Wipe off the chain. That's looking pretty good so far. Got a lot of stuff right here at the edge of my table. I need to be careful with that. Now I'm going to turn it around and then go the other direction, but this time I'm going to get a little purple just right in here and I'm going to start my chain pull right there because there won't be an annoying line there later. because I'm going to do black and blue from the top as well. But I want to pull off a little bit of that anyway. But I just want a little bit of that purple in the background to look like, you know, very, very rainy city streets. Make it go a little crooked. Rinse this off, go back into the black. Back in black. If it wasn't copyright infringement, that could be a fun background music. Okay, now I'm going to move that purple out of the way because I'm not going to use any more of that. I'm just going to do the blue, or the black again from the top of the other, whoops, from the top of the other side. Whoop. Again make little mistakes like that, it's no biggie, because it's going to drag right across it anyway. Alright, here we go. That's just going to pull through that purple, get rid of that line. Do the blue again. In the same way. That's too, too crookedy. Now I'm really 
really hoping just to sit here for a few minutes and hoping that some of those black cells come back up through. If they don't, I might do one more sweep of black from this direction. Um, just simply because I want that black down here. In fact, I think I might go ahead and do that. Because I do want that to look like wet pavement. And I don't want to erase all that purple and blue either. So, last sweep. Now let's just see what happens. I might take the torch to it just to get some of that blue to come back forward, but I don't know if I want to. I don't want to get a big cell. doesn't dry very fast. You get plenty of time to to clean things and to remix paint and to do all those kind of things. However, um, I'm getting myself in the habit of doing things quickly because I'm switching from Floetrol to uh, Liquitex medium because let's leave this out long so it'll dry. I'm switching to Liquitex because the flow, I, I'm having some asthmatic and lung issues. I just got over a long bout of pneumonia and I think the fumes from the Floetrol exacerbate my issue. So, and Liquitex doesn't seem to do that. So I'm going to take the torch just a little bit. I'm going to do too much. That can also produce fumes, so don't breathe in while you're doing that when you're standing over your painting. All right, see that's looking exactly how I want it. I'm definitely happy with this chain pull. I'm already seeing in my mind what I want to do with it, and I don't think I'm going to be disappointed. I will post the embellishment over this background in my next video. If you don't want to miss it, click on that little bell at the bottom of this video to get notifications when I post new stuff. If you like this little pour lesson, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more mixed media art. See you next time!